our war with the Muggles begins today. Best line in the movie, hands down. Welcome, thank you for joining me on this movie review. This is the third and final, currently, movie review for the Fantastic Beasts movie franchise. My name is Chris, and as of filming this today, my previous video reviewing the Grimes of Grindelwald movie has zero views, none. So despite that, we're gonna press on and do our best. So Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. Basically, I'm gonna give you an overview of the entire plot and then get into what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, and then my concluding thoughts about the overall film and if you should see it or not. Now, let's skip over the opening scene with Dumbledore and Grindelwald in the cafe. I'll get to that later. So the opening scene with Newt when he tracks down the mama chillin is pretty cool to see him out in the wild doing his thing, but we never find out why or how he located the chillin and if Dumbledore informed him or encouraged him to go out and find the beast or if the ministry reached out to him to try and get the chillin to bring it back as part of the election, that's never addressed at all in the movie and that's a problem theme throughout the movie, a problem that things happen, new things that we've never seen before happen in the wizarding world and just things that happen throughout the plot that just have no explanation. And that's really a, a downfall of this movie across the board. And after Newt finds the mama chillin, it gives birth to a baby chillin and Credence and Dumbledore's minions catch up to Newt and basically capture and take the chillin. But as the movie goes on, we see that the chillin had twins and Newt is able to take the second baby chillin safely away in his magical suitcase while the mama chillin dies, which doesn't really make a lot of sense because it was hit with a green spell and the only green spell that we know of in the Harry Potter franchise movies is about a cadavera and that instantly kills you and uh, the mama chillin was quite alive for a time after it got hit with the spell, so that doesn't really track with how magic works in the wizarding world. Regardless, we finally get to see another glimpse of Nurmengard Castle, which looks fantastic. And we see Grindelwald, played by Mads Mikkelsen, who replaced Johnny Depp. Terrible, unfortunate happening there, but in his opening scene, he kills the chillin and really shocks Queenie, kind of gets her thinking, what am I really doing here? Should I really align myself with these people? And um, that was, I know I'm rambling with my overview of the movie, but uh, Queenie and her whole switch from the good group going to the dark side with Grindelwald. That had such a opportunity on how she would revert back with Jacob and everyone else. And they didn't stick the landing with that in this movie when it was all said and done. But anyway, Newt and his brother Theseus go and see Dumbledore in Hogsmeade and he recruits them to basically try and break the blood pact. That's really, where this entire movie is going towards in terms of the good guys. And I know the movie is called Secrets of Dumbledore. Not sure why, if they just wanted to do a opposite from the previous movie, Crimes of Grindelwald, have something with Dumbledore's name in the title, but wouldn't be my first choice for the title. But anyway, he gets recruited along with the usual suspects. Except with Tina, she's nowhere to be found. Apparently she's busy in the ministry, blah, 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 scheduling conflicts. And, you know, ultimately Dumbledore 
sends everyone out on their own secret mis mission because not everyone can know everything. So Newt goes with Theseus, Lally, Jacob. Did I say Theseus already? Anyway, they go to the German Ministry of Magic. Bunty goes to some muggle, um, um, luggage repair salesman to make a replica half a dozen of new suitcases and that's so ridiculous on its own but basically people get separated theseus gets arrested and at this german ministry of magic event that they come across there's this political rally going on with the two candidates that are currently in the election cycle that's going to take over ruling the wizarding world as supreme mugwump which is currently held by anton vogel from germany but the two candidates are santos a lady from brazil and lu dao a chinese man of course they had to play the china angle for viewership overseas but anyway um those two characters, bland as could be, nothing flushed out there, nothing to... Basically, we're supposed to like them because they're not Grindelwald. And Anton Vogel basically clears Grindelwald at this rally, absolving him of all his elish crimes. So he could run as a candidate for leader of the Wizarding World. And more things happen between the good guys, Dumbledore meets up with them and um, if you notice this wand here it's a fake wand that Dumbledore gives Jake out that doesn't have a core but it's made out of snake wood which has significance in the wizarding world with Salazar Slytherin and um, basically it's really for this one encounter that Jacob and Lally go to this uh, dinner with Grindelwald and other political leaders there. And things happen, it's very, very contrite and they play a lot of, I guess, nostalgia with, oh, you remember this? You remember this thing in the Wizarding World? Do you remember this soundtrack from this movie? And if I seem like I'm having low energy in this movie, it's, because of this movie, it doesn't get me excited uh, for what we get in a Wizarding World Fantastic Beasts movie. And this is the third, even though I was very pumped and, you know, had a lot of things to say and soaked up the first viewing of this in theaters. I saw it three times in theaters. Um, it, it's really a bit of a letdown and um, by far the worst, the weakest of the three Fantastic Beasts movies. And basically, the movie chugs along towards the end where Grindelwald is you know, falsely elected leader from the chillin' that he took. He reanimated it after he killed it, so it would um, basically bow before him during the walking of the chillin', and um, they have to do the whole thing over again, and then it goes to Dumbledore, he declines because that's our man Dumbledore. He can't be trusted with power. We've seen that in the books and we see it again here. And then Chillin picks Santos, which is such a cop out. It's just like, okay, you know, she's there. Female leader, hurrah, Theseus got his wish. And um, basically the non Grindelwald candidate was supposed to be, you know, like, oh, she's, good choice because I guess she stopped the Cruciatus curse when Jacob was suffering so I guess we're supposed to know she's a good person but anyway let's get into the pros of the movie the things that I liked about it because believe me it may not seem like it but there are things that I enjoyed throughout the movie So the opening music, when the title comes on screen, it 
reminds me <laughs> that someone should be yelling, I killed Sirius Black, I killed Sirius Black. It fits perfectly with those words and <laughs> it really gets you hyped at the beginning of the movie. And um, there's a scene where Newt is petting the Mama Chillin at the his opening scene and his hand is on top of the scaly body of this creature and it's really great how they blend um, I guess for lack of word practical effects his actual hand on this CGI animal it was done really well um, they pulled that off great like I said we got to see Nurmengard Castle which eventually becomes Grindelwald's own prison that's so cool we actually get to go inside some more and see it that was really cool to see that um not just that opening music but throughout the movie music will creep in during the middle of a scene during a conversation where tension or drama is heightening up and boiling to the surface and that really plays well in many scenes and the flip side of that is movie makers use familiar soundtracks that aren't original to this movie and I wish they would have done that more. I, I, I know that really belongs in the con part of this video but they could have used more original music for this movie. I'm just saying, just saying. Uh, Lally Hicks is this new um, black witch we get to meet. She recruits Jacob on Dumbledore's behalf. She apparently teaches charms at Ilvermorny so power to her and we basically got the lead of a strange treatment with her character they previewed her just a picture simple scene in the previous movie and now she's actually a legit real character in this movie just like they did with Lita first Fantastic Beast movie she was actually a real player in the movie Crimes of Grindelwald so she's got a thing with books uh, using them as port keys so I guess that's related to her charms, ability, I guess, charming things to become port keys. Good for her, I guess. But um, I really loved the paintings in the background of the crowd as they were watching Anton Vogel do a speech absolving Grindelwald, announcing that, yes, he can run in the election. Uh, it was so cool because it wasn't just people moving fluidly throughout the painting or from one portrait to another. It was like these images were moving in such a ghostly, hypnotic way. And it was really, really fantastical. Just something you salivate at, like, yes, give me these details. In a Wizarding World movie, it was really well done by the special effects design team, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it. Next time you watch it or first time watching it, look for those paintings in the background. The lightning, oh, so good. And the pool that Grindelwald has, I call it the Inferus pool because he reanimates the dead chillin that he killed so it could do his bidding and basically... Um, rig the election for himself. That was really cool to see that dark magic play out in real time in the movie and how he actually used it. I just talked about it. And um, what else? I don't want to miss anything. One thing that's funny one that I've seen in other movie reviews of this film is that People didn't understand the walk of the chillin and how that played into the election of this whole movie. Um, people just assumed because characters throughout the film talk about the history of the chillin and how it decided their leaders in the past and um, how chill and can really see into someone's soul and see how pure they are and if they're worthy but nearly everyone misses the direction and purpose that they go for 
the chilling in this movie is they use it in the selection to determine who's the worthiest candidate, but that isn't the final say for who's going to be elected, who wins the election. That's just like, you know, a sort of taste test, if you will, on a non-partial, unbiased, magical force helping the people decide who's the best candidate. Because you see, not just um, at the top of the kingdom of Bhutan in the Eastern Himalayas, but even people watching around the world at the British Ministry of Magic and other places they flash to that they send spells into the air with different symbols of different colors that represent the candidates. That wasn't explained at all in the movie. You're just supposed to get that as Newt and company are walking to the German Ministry of Magic through this political rally um, with Santos on one side and Dao's side, Chinese followers are on the other. You, you see them shooting up their different colored symbols in the air and you're supposed to make that connection by the end of the movie. And then Grindelwald has his, I believe his signal's green, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, that's how they vote is sending up the signal or the s symbol, not signal, for who they want to vote for, the candidate. So I guess that should have been more fleshed out in the movie. And I don't know, I thought it was funny how a lot of people who reviewed this movie and other so-called huge Harry Potter fans completely missed that in the movie, just completely got it wrong. But last thing I'll say for the pros of this movie, I really loved um, Mads Mikkelsen's performance, even though I wish we could have gotten Johnny Depp. Um, he was good in this movie. Uh, one of the best things about it, great acting from him. So he delivered, did his job. And I guess we'll move on to the cons, what I didn't like about the movie. By the way, if you saw my other video I did earlier this year about my Harry Potter t-shirt collection, uh, this was the shirt that I neglected to include in that video. I forgot about it. It's my Slytherin shirt that I got from Box Lunch and uh, various Harry Potter merchandise. But besides the point, let's get in to the rest of this video. Now, like I said, the movie very lazy and not explaining certain things like what is up with that opening scene? Did Grindelwald just have a hypothetical vision of what his interaction with Grindelwald would be like? Did he actually meet with Grindelwald in some parallel magical dimension removed from some their current physical world or is that them actually interacting within the blood pack pennant because there's the final dueling scene, which I guess you could call that towards the end of the movie where uh, it's more clear to me with my theory, which I can't believe no one has brought this up, that when they're doing their final duel, once they actually cross paths and meet each other, which is insane and has its own host of problems entirely, that they're actually, um, that they're actually inside the pennant when all that is happening, um, where it's all white and everyone disappeared. That they're actually the two uh, lights that are flying around that you see inside the pennant is actually them. Like they're inside the blood pack because it's their blood. Um, that's my interpretation and theory of that. But anyway, opening scene doesn't get explained for how that magic works. We just see the cafe restaurant go up in flames and then cuts to Dumbledore in his office and he opens his eyes like, I just returned or I was just thinking about that. It was a 
daydream, but that's never explained at all. But I'd be okay with it. I'd love to know, you know, how that works, but they never give us those answers. And there was this um, interracial couple in the cafe. It really took you out of the movie because it's so distracting. Um, um, because they're uh, framed in front of Dumbledore and Grindelwald, how they're seated. And like I said, it just takes you out of the movie because it's supposed to be 1930s, somewhere in London. And it's just like, really? It's just like, I don't buy that. That that wasn't a thing back then. So um, they could have done better with the background casting in this film. And I guess, what else? I talked about Vada Kedavra with the green spell and the chillin'. And not only is the chillin' a new creature that we haven't seen before in any of the films, but that bird, that pterodactyl dinosaur looking creature that flies away with Newt and his case after he takes in the second baby chillin, which brings us to the titles, the opening of the movie. Uh, I didn't look up that creature's name because it's never talked about at all in the movie, but I remember reading an article leading up to the movie that that was a new creature, never discussed, written about, talked about before this movie. So again, they're going back to that same well of, oh, let's pick up all these different creatures for this movie. It's like, you have so many things to go off of. Like, why does Newt have to be going after this creature that we've never heard about that's supposed to be very famous in wizarding history and has to be important to the plot? Can he be like off? investigating whether a uh, Lethi fold is really a real creature or not. Like, give us something juicy from the actual textbook that we have, that we've grown up with. It was frustrating in the creature's regard, but there's also a two-way mirror that is kind of used in this movie. You don't see each other, but you can write messages on your own mirror, and it will appear on another person's mirror, and that's out. Aberforth and Credence communicate between the Hogshead and Nurmengard Castle. Never explained how they figured out how they could communicate from there to there, or basically when they started, you know, communicating with each other and how that would have happened. Did Aberforth reach out the credence and you know it's just like why wouldn't he tell him over the messages that I'm your father like when Dumbledore has his duel it's hardly a duel I mean Dumbledore could easily put credence six feet under with both of his arms tied behind his back without his wand but he tells him that, you know, you are a Dumbledore, that, you know, what Grindelwald said was true and, you know, confirms what Grindelwald said, but Credence only had Grindelwald's word. He didn't actually know and Dumbledore confirmed that. So it's like Abelforth saying, come home, you know, you know, like, you know, it, it, it just doesn't make sense. Like, certain things they didn't think through or just like ah, put together to make sense and Newt is really a non-factor in the movie besides the opening scene to get the chillin involved he's really a non-factor and um, you know besides that scene if he was out from the rest of the movie things would have happened exactly as they did he was it wasn't relevant very much at all throughout the movie. And then Lally has a scene where um, basically uh, she says that she wrote a book called Advanced Charm Casting and um, yeah, and we know that she's the charms teacher, but she says to Newt that 
Fantastic Beasts is required reading for all of her fifth years, it's like, those subjects don't overlap at all. Why would you assign that textbook to a charms class? Like, are you thick <laughs> in the head? Like, what is she thinking? It, it makes no sense. They're, they're just trying to have some relation there, some connection between the characters, but it doesn't make sense at all. And yeah, even loudly talking about the first years in the Great Hall makes no sense. I mean, sure, she was a very, you know, endearing, um, you know, positive character, but a lot of what she says is just like, what? It's just like, you're not making any sense. So that was weird. And it was a pointless interaction between Jacob and some witch lady that um, comes up to him randomly. And it's just like, I, I think her name's like Judith or Edith or Alice or something. And um, basically introduces herself and she's like, and where are you from, Mr. Kowalski? And he's like, Queens. Like Jacob is really like weirded out by the whole interaction. And then he says, I'm from Queens. And she's like, oh, and that's it. Like, what was the point of that scene? It was such a waste. Like, give me back two minutes of Dumbledore Grindelwald, like back and forth or, you know, seeking power scenes. It's like, why? It's like, were you trying to be comedic? Like, that was such a stupid scene. It should have been cut. Um, yeah, and another thing that just boggled my mind was, if you notice, when Newt and company, they go to the German Ministry of Magic to get there, they got to go through this brick wall, reminds you of, in the back of the Leaky Cauldron to get to Diagon Alley. Diagonally. And they approach it, and he doesn't say anything. No magical words, no flick of the wand, nothing. It just goes through it. It's like nothing, no countermeasure, no protection, no nothing. Like, so you're saying if a muggle just walked up to the wall, they would be able to go through and stumble across this secret society of people, the German Ministry of Magic. It's like, Jacob had no problem walking through. So, like, what the heck? I mean, there's so many things that seem like they didn't think through, whether it was in the script or just trying to make it all into a movie. And that's one thing that this whole franchise suffers for. I don't think the writing is the issue. It's the formula for how they make the these movies. If you don't know, J.K. Rowling writes the scripts and she releases them in book form. This is Secrets of Dumbledore book that I have right there. And it's basically a giant script. It's not in novel form, but they release it. I can't remember if it's a week before the movie is released or the day after, day before the movie is released to theaters. So it's not a legit adaptation from any book. It's just her writing the script and then packaging the script in physical form for the movie to come out. So I think if she actually committed and wrote each book story form as a novel and then took those books, collaborated with Warner Brothers and the movie makers to actually make movies from those books that would be a more grounded, thought out, and more cohesive set of movies that we would get instead of, you know, first go at it, let's just get it all out and, you know, see if it sticks with what works or what doesn't. It's like, no, they're going for it. Like, there's nothing that they can really cut out. Like, if they go for it, if they would have written in the book, they'd be like, oh yeah, we don't like this, we don't like that, this doesn't really make sense. 
I, I, I don't know what that was about, but we're gonna do this, this, and that, and then make it work, but they don't do that. I think that's why these movies are suffering the way they are, story-wise, and with the plot is because of, they're not based off of books. And then, um, yeah, the duels between secondary characters with at the um, at the base of the kingdom of Bhutan when they're trying to get to the walking of the chilla and that was um, it was just whatever it wasn't exciting and especially when everything is um, nonverbal the spells it's just like it's it's so lame. I mean, I know they're adults and advanced wizards, supposedly, and, you know, that shows that, oh, they, they're more skilled at magic because they do do nonverbal, but as an audience member for a movie, um, it just comes off very bad. It, it's not well done at all. I mean, the background props and Details on the set, special effects, the locations were great. They did a good job with that. But, ah, oh, it's just so many things. Abernathy, Abernathy, he was missed, but because the actor was charged and convicted of um, sexual assault allegations, so they didn't have him for this movie. But, yeah, the movie makers couldn't help themselves. They had to include the room of requirement. And the one thing that is so stupid is like, why have it if you're not even gonna address it or even talk about it is the giant port key that they had in the room of requirement that they take to get to the kingdom of Bhutan with the five suitcases. It's, I had to look it in the script for a description because they don't mention it. It's not clear what it is like anyone watching has no idea what it is. It just has pictures of the chillin and the mountain and weird symbols, but it's actually a, I wanna get this right, it's a, it's, um, oh gosh. I looked at it before I started, but, oh, let me look this up. So I wanna get it right, but it, it's just like, you couldn't take two minutes to talk about it it's like, uh, okay. Okay, it's a Bhutanese prayer wheel, an ornate Bhutanese prayer wheel. So Bhutanese, a giant thick cylinder looking thing that's spinning and floating in the air. It's apparently a prayer wheel from Bhutan, um, Eastern Himalayan. So um, never would have gotten that if it wasn't for the book, the script. So thanks for nothing movie. <laughs> so uh, I don't want to hate on this movie too much, but you know, missed opportunity to actually kill Jake and make a sting. I know he's so likable, the most likable character, comic relief. If they continue with four and five movie, um, of course they're gonna have him, but there's no way you can continue, if they continue to a fourth and fifth movie, that Credence should or could be in the next movies. Like, they should have shown him dying at the end of this movie, realistically, like, come on, that should have been what happened, but he's sickly and had to uh, go off with Abba Forth and have that reuniting. But not just that, with the deplorable, just terrible of a person that Ezra Miller is and his personal behavior, his personal life, um, shouldn't be associated with these films in the future. So that's another reason not to include Credence going forward, aside from it uh, making the most sense story-wise. Now, what else? Oh yeah, y Yusuf Kama's moment of truth. It, it was so cringe and poorly executed. It's like, 
okay, you had him willingly join Grindelwald's group. And, okay, he did nothing to prove his loyalty when Grindelwald said, prove, prove your loyalty, yes, of Kama. Mr. Kama. And I guess the scene where they take out his memory is supposed to be emotional, but the actor doesn't sell it. It's really, like, why are they keeping you around? Like, why are you here? It's like, is it just to check some box or, like, uh, you're not a cool character. <laughs> and for the entire first half of this movie, every scene he's in, he has to say his name. It's like the, they have to tell the audience, this guy's name is Yusuf Kama. Don't forget, you forgot who this is. My name is Yusuf Kama. Kama, Yusuf Kama. Halt, who goes there? My name is Yusuf Kama. It's like, oh yeah, we haven't seen you since the last scene where you introduced yourself to the audience. And before that, in the time before that, it's a terrible character. If I'm being honest, that should have just totally been scrapped from this movie. Um, yeah, and of course, they had to squeeze McGonagall in there for one scene, even though she shouldn't even be in that position at this timeline, if we're going off of the other Harry Potter books. But anyway, Oh, I mean, what else can I say? I'm pretty indifferent to everything else. I mean, your three choices are Brazil, China, Grindelwald, and I'm sorry, I choose Grindelwald. <laughs> I'm casting my vote. I mean, let's be honest. Um, yeah. Um, easily the worst Fantastic Beast movie, and weaker than the worst Harry Potter movie by far. Um, I guess the rewatchability is up there because you could see so many things that, um, you know, you can try and make sense with like, wait, what's going on here? Like, why, why is that happening? Like, did they really just do that? Or like, come on, like, they, they can't have done that. Like. These people have been given such a great gift. They've been um, given the responsibility of making a Fantastic Beast movie in the world of the Wizarding World, and you chose to do that? Um, yeah, if anything, the reason to rewatch this movie over and over again is to come up with your best theories on what is happening and why that should be allowed to take place in the wisdom world because there's either no precedent for it or that kind of magic just doesn't work with everything else that has been established. And um, I'll, I'll just send them um, video on these two points. Credence for all that character was hyped up to be with the misdirection article before the first Fantastic Beast movie and how it was supposed to be modesty, a small child that was supposed to be this game-changing character, very powerful within the wisdom world, like Lookout, ended up being Credence at the end of the first Fantastic Beast movie. He's got like 80 words or less in this film. I, I literally wrote down every single word of dialogue he has in this film and it's around 80 words, could be a little less, that's shocking for what a big deal he was supposed to be and this big piece for Grindelwald's force to take out Dumbledore. And we, we see it like halfway in the movie, like Dumbledore makes mincemeat of him. Like he barely has to do any effort to put Credence in his place. So it's like, after all that, like there was, no real payoff like even the back and forth okay it was fun to look at whatever but it wasn't satisfying like uh, it, was, 
it was just a letdown. And then the ultimate sin that this movie commits is that, as we all know or should know, that once Dumbledore and Grindelwald and Aberforth had their three-way duel, which resulted in killing Ariana Dumbledore, uh, Grindelwald left Godric's Hollow, never to see Dumbledore again until their famous duel in 1945. And you know, this is just... That's been well established as it can be in the Wizarding World book, movie, and not only do Dumbledore and Grindelwald have their own duel in this movie before 1945, in previous decade of the 30s okay let's say even if they do that and they're the only ones that know about it because they're transported or their beings are inside this blood pack you see the swirling lights and even though it's grand and epical and sparks are flying and magic is happening and all that it, mm -hmm we see them cross paths and confront each other on top of the kingdom of Bhutan when it's all revealed that Grindelwald rigged the election, used a dead chillin, and is confronted. He goes to kill Credence, Abbeforth, Dumbledore, make their moves to protect, and there's like a a hundred people on top of the mountain, like, are you kidding me? Like, they're not even supposed to be in the same vicinity, let alone dueling against each other. It's like, what are we doing here? Did they really have little faith on this movie? Because they said, oh, we're the fourth and fifth movies. If we're going to continue with that, it's going to be contingent on the success of this movie. Did they really have little faith in this movie that they realized, hey, probably not going to be able to make a fourth in the ultimate fifth epic movie with the showdown, the epic 1945 duel between Dumbledore and Grindelwald, ultimately Dumbledore gaining possession of the Elder Wand. Let's just have them duel now at the end of this movie. And, you know, we could give the people a little something like that, like they would have gotten. I, I don't know if that was the mindset, but it was really, really shocking the first, the second, the third time watching it. And just like, they really went there. They really went there. Like, that alone uh, deems this movie a thumbs down. Sorry, that's... Well, that's my movie review for Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. See it for yourself to see if I'm wrong or right and to form your own opinion while you're here. Please give this video a like if you found it entertaining, informative, or just enjoyed my ramblings. So that's all I got for you today. Look forward to me. Look forward to seeing me in my next month's video, last of this year. Cheers.